Welcome to Lyra Biology. Fine. We are doing very well. Yes. We are almost ending another topic. Level of organization of life. Levels of organization of life. Levels of organization of life. Let's look at differences between unicellular and multicellular organism. Differences between unicellular and multicellular organisms. Difference between unicellular and multicellular organism. What is unicellular organism? It's organism. And with the individual. It's an organism that is made up of only one cell which can perform all life activities. Example, amoeba. Another example, paramecium. More examples, euglena. Chlamydomonas. We are on eukaryotic cell. As you can also mention bacteria. We are eukaryotic cell. If it's for all living things, you can also mention bacteria. What about cellular organism? Organism made up of more than one cell. All animals are multicellular. We have been looking at the advantages and disadvantages of life at each level. Let's look at the differences now. It's just a summary of all that we have done in the previous lesson. Which one has specialization? Which one is smaller in size? Which one is larger in size? Which one is made up of a single cell? Which one is made up of more than one cell? Have a surface area to volume ratio? Have a movement of material? Which of them has a special system for that? Which of them, after reproduction, will not exist again? So we want to look at that. So you draw a table nicely. If you don't draw a table, you lose points. So unicellular organism. Multicellular organism. Draw it table nicely. You take it from there. You are doing the discussion. You refer to the table in Mega One. I hope you are ready. Unicellular organism, there are no specialization of cells. Cells are not specialized. But in multicellular, we have specialization of cells. Specialization of cells. The in terms of size, in a cellular organism, it's clear that it's smaller in size than a cellular organism. Who of them is made up of only one cell? Unicellular organism. Multicellular organism is made up of more than one cell. What about surface area to volume ratio? This is different from size and uh, one or two things. It's different from size. Because a particular organism may be larger, relatively larger than the other. But in terms of surface area to volume ratio, it may be different. It may have a smaller surface area to volume ratio, or vice versa. I hope you are okay. So surface area to volume ratio is large in unicellular organism. It's small in multicellular organism. Which of these groups of organisms do you have special mechanism, special system for transport of material 
please, this topic is very important. Transport of material between the cell, between the organism and the environment. I told you that the organism did not come to this world with materials. Materials are taken from the environment. Where environment means the surrounding of the organism. And because of metabolic activity too, and other things, waste product will be formed in the organism. And the waste products are not part of the existence of the organism. They must be eliminated to the environment. And surface area to volume ratio determines this a lot. So unicellular organisms, movement of material between the organism and the environment. And within the organism itself, it's made by diffusion. But in multicellular organism, Special systems are designed for that. What about reproduction? In a cellular organism, reproduction leads to disintegration of parents. In a cellular organism, reproduction does not lead to disintegration of parents. Doesn't lead that. In most cases, apart from some type of vegetative propagation, but in most cases, it doesn't lead to disintegration of parents. These are the differences between the cellular and multicellular organism. I advise students to emphasize on the structural differences first. And if you are asked to give more, then look at others, like a movement of material. But if you talk of structural differences, the size, surface area to volume ratio, number of cells, etc. I hope you are okay. Thank you for working learning biology. I hope you, enjoyed this, you have enjoyed this lesson. Let's reconsider what we have studied in this chapter. Let us remember what we have studied in this series of lessons. You know, I'm very particular about connecting you it is, biology is about life. Biology is about life. And life is about cell. Because the basic unit, the basic unit of life is the cell. How does the cell contribute to life? Some organism, only one cell. Others, more than one. Those that are more than one, the specialization. Not only two or three, a lot of specialization. When they specialize to perform specific function, they do it together with others. This is what we call tissues. So it is gradual process. Then several tissues will form an organ. Then an organ will perform one or more functions. Sometimes the organ does not perform the function alone to bring a meaningful function to the whole organism. So, series of organisms, organ system. But we have organism. These are levels of organization of life. Five levels of organization of life. You have to be able to name the level and give example. Then, don't also forget that some organism, the maximum level of organization in that organism is not up to organism level. The climax of everything, the maximum. Some is only cellular level. Some is only tissue level. Some are to organism. And that unicellular organism, the level of organization, level of organization is cellular level. Hydra and Obelia, for instance, typical white specimen, typical examination specimen. The level of organization is tissue. Storing organs such as bulb, rhizome, comb, level of organization is organ. It's organ level. Then we don't have system level. What about animals? What about plants? 
all animal because some animal hydra and koa animal majority of animals and plants level of organization is organism and that as we move from the cellular level to organism level it's increase in complexity and this is what we call complexity and that complexity also has its own problems and we look at how nature has adapted more cellular organism to solve this problem easily. That they are not even aware that they have a problem. We also say that unicellular organism, one cell that is the whole organism, is more complex than a single cell from a multicellular organism. Because in this case, the cell of unicellular organism is equipped, is adapted, is endowed to perform all life activities, so it's complex, than a single cell from a multicellular organism. We also say that in terms of structure, a number of cells, multicellular organisms are more complex than unicellular organisms. That one is obvious. And that because organisms take nutrients and material from other nutrients from the environment, there's the need for surface area to volume ratio business. And that organisms need material from the environment and also to eliminate materials that they don't need to the environment. And that cells that are not in direct contact with the environment in terms of multicellular organism, in the case of multicellular organism, have a problem. If you join a big bus, school bus, those in the middle, when the car stops, to buy something from outside, you have to stretch your hand. Your friend will have to buy it for you. If you're in a smaller car, you can stretch your hand. Exchange your material is easy. So surface area to volume ratio. When the cells are nearer to the external environment, surface area to volume ratio is said to be high. To be large. It's said to be large. When they are far away, majority of them are far away, surface area to volume ratio is said to be small. This is a big problem. Nature has endowed organism to solve this problem. For instance, alveoli in the lungs of mammals increases surface area to volume ratio, thereby making exchange of gases easy. Respiratory gases easy. Also, presence of villi in the ileum of mammals increases surface area to volume ratio for easy absorption. And that tapeworm or flatworms, the lack transport system that is even found in vertebrates and other animals. Because when the oxygen gets to the lungs, transport system must carry the oxygen from the lungs to other parts of the body. It's also adaptation. The flatworm don't have vascular system. So that's why they are flat. They are not as cylindrical as in earthworm, that segmented worm, and roundworm. Like Ascaris, they are flat so that absorption will occur across the surface of the body or the flat worm. This organism also lacks digestive tissue, digestive system, so they cannot digest even though they are multicellular. So, increase in surface area to volume ratio is ensured by your shape, flatness. Have you you see, biology, everything will be explained. I told you that in plants, referred to as deciduous plants, they are the plants that share their leaves during the dry season. And that presence of leaves provide lack surface area to volume ratio in plants. It's very important. Because lack surface area to volume ratio will ensure efficiency in photosynthesis. Because as surface area to volume ratio is increased, more carbon dioxide will diffuse. Trap maximum amount of sunlight too. And 
means transpiration also helps to generate a force that will move water from the stem to the leaf. So surface area, like surface area to below ratio, is necessary in plants. But during the dry season, when water is not available, the plant must ensure that water is conserved. So the plant sheds the leaves. Shedding leaves means reduction of surface area to volume ratio. So rate of transpiration is reduced. Thank you very much for watching Learn Biology. Join me in the next lesson. As usual, we have to solve some questions and test our understanding. Bye.